time with super concentrated iced coffee, like a winner. So as you may know from last time, we have work, we have personal, and we have silly shenanigans nonsense. One of you beautiful viewers at PAX East gave me three cups and one of them got cracked on the way over here, so I'm trying to fix it and then I will be using those, but for now we're just gonna keep using these mugs. I just want you to know, I just want you to know I still have them, I didn't like throw them away or do anything else mean. They're so cute, they're these little mugs that she like painted on. Anyway, you'll, you'll see them eventually, it's fine. So we do three questions from each. Work, personal, silly, work, personal, silly, work, personal, silly. From John Sylvanus again, how did you get in here? How does merch impact your income? Um, this is going to be my first time, so like right now, at the time that I'm filming this, we're doing the tail end of the Mirror Cat t-shirts through Rodeo Arcade. I've never gone through Rodeo Arcade before, I have no idea how it's going to impact my income, but I can tell you that, um, from District Lines, I make enough that, uh, that merch is, is an important aspect for me. Um, so anytime you guys decide to support me and buy a mug or a t-shirt or a hoodie or anything, uh, I know that sometimes we wind up running out of one of those and I don't notice and then you guys are like, hey, when are you gonna get more hoodies in? And then I email them and say, hey, we don't have any hoodies in and then they fix it. But, <laughs> um, but no, I, I absolutely love having all of that merch up as well because I think that it's just really fun and I think the designs are fantastic. Allie really like knocked it out of the park when she was designing for me. Um, but I, I hope that everybody really likes the mirror cat shirt because the rodeo arcade people are fantastic to work with and they're all super artistic nerdy wonderful people and i'd love to continue working with them so if you uh wound up buying a mirror cat shirt you supported a great company and you wind up giving me a little a little extra money as well which i really appreciate from charlie tracy adams if you could play a card game competitively which one would it be Oh. Magic has a lot of history to it, and it's also a game that I've played a lot, so I would probably say Magic just because I don't have a whole lot of experience with other exclusively card games. There are plenty of board games that incorporate cards into them, but they're not actually a card game, right? So like, I wound up going to a L5R tournament, which was great. Um, but I still, I watch them so closely and I still have no idea how that game is played. So for me, it's kind of like the only one that I could say with any sort of knowledge or information behind it would be Magic. That's the one that I understand the most. So, yeah, I would, if I was a, a dope Magic player, I would totally compete in tournaments, but I'm, I'm not. And... Silly Billies. What we got for Silly Billies today? Ooh, this is a large one. From Simon Lamb, what three items would you take to a desert island? Uh, I wouldn't take Sherlock Cat with me because he'd get eaten by something. Or eaten by me, really, I don't know. Am I going to this desert island for vacation? Or was I captured on a pirate ship and then they ditched me there with like the one gun and a bullet? No, that wouldn't make any sense because I get to choose three things that I'm bringing with me. I'm on vacation. Why did I choose this? So I'm on vacation on this desert island, right? How did I get there? I don't know. I'm gonna assume that they didn't leave me a boat though. Maybe that was a surprise. So I'm like, man, this travel agency is just booty, but thank goodness I brought these three things, right? Oh, hey, kitty. Oh, oh, hey, oh, hi, hey. What you doing? What you looking at? There's a lot of stuff up there. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh, you don't want to let go at all. I would bring one of my travel journals, because obviously I'm going on vacation, of course I would bring a travel journal. That makes a lot of sense in whatever context. Is it cheating to say I would bring an emergency kit? Because that would have a lot of things all up in there. I'm just gonna say it anyway. I would bring, I would bring a, a travel journal, I would bring an emergency kit, and I would bring, oh, what would be my third thing? A katana. Have you ever worked on a video and wished you had never uploaded it from Bradley Harris? I don't think that I've ever uploaded a video that I was like ashamed of. I mean, I just, I don't know, I don't get embarrassed very easily um, and I'm kind of game for whatever and my friends always come up with really interesting sketches, I think. So there's nothing, no matter how much TV wants to give me flack for some of the videos I've been in because they're pandering. They're so much fun. I love any video where I get to dance, because I love dancing. 
um, any video where I have to wear a dress. I never wear dresses in my real life, so I'm like, ah, oh, new experience! Videos that are vulgar, whatever. Videos that are really silly, awesome. Eric Vrelin, what is it like to live in California? What a broad question. Um, I don't know what your point of comparison is, but I can tell you that where I live right now, the things that I have the most trouble getting used to are the fact that there are no seasons here whatsoever. It can be middle of winter and it's still like in the 70s Fahrenheit. And it can be summer and it's in the 70s Fahrenheit. So there are times when I actively have to remind myself what season it is, like in my hometown in Oregon. One of the things that I think is really, really cool about being in LA is that there are so many people, and again, this is just specific to LA, I'm not sure about other areas of California because I've never lived in other areas of California, but there are people from all over the world that come into LA, so there are lots of different cultures, and I really love knowing that if I say I'm watching a video, this was me earlier today, say I'm watching a video about how to make Korean food, and the person says, ah, oh, you need to use this very specific type of radish that you normally wouldn't find in a grocery store, I know that probably within about 15 or 20 minutes of me, there is a Korean market that I could probably find that very specific radish at. It's cool you have a lot of leeway to do so many different things and to meet so many different types of people um, again, weather-wise, I would much prefer for there to be a little bit more fluctuation, but there just isn't. Wait, was that a personal? What did I just do? Uh, yes it was! Okay, just kidding! From Chris Cadorna, if you could recolor animals, what colors would they be? Like all of them? Here's what I wish. I know that there are plenty of animals that can see a wider spectrum of colors than we can, which I think is just, I'm so jelly, I'm so jelly of some of those animals and insects and things. But maybe, rather than saying I would recolor things, maybe what I would wish for is that we could see a wider spectrum of color, and then perhaps all of these animals, where we've gotten used to a specific color on them, we could see so many different things going on. That's what I want. I don't want to recolor animals, no, no, no. I want to know what they look like when you've got a huge spectrum of eyeballs. Last work question. Oh, they're like four battling for glory, all right. From Guy Man. Have you thought about making a scripted fictional show? I have thought about this so many times so many times. I would love to either do like a sketch-based show or a scripted show that has an actual story arc. I think something like that would be amazing, but I'm not a writer. I'll be completely honest with you. I love writing. I think that it's very fun, but I know, I know deep, deep in here that I am not a writer at heart. So I thought before about teaming up with one of my writer friends because I have friends that are just amazing at it and I would love to do a project like that. It's just a lot of work and a lot of money. A lot of people need to be involved. Um, I guess that's not necessarily true. You could write something where a lot of people didn't really need to be involved. But um, yeah, if I did it, I would want to do it right. So that's the thing. Oh, so many! From Bjorn, who is Chris? Oh, you mean like my roommate? Okay, Chris is a friend from Oregon. Right now, everybody that's living in our house is from Oregon. We all knew each other or knew of each other before any of us even moved out to LA. So Chris and Mike Husky were like super, super close friends in college. And when they had some job openings out here and Chris was looking for a job, uh, we suggested that he move out here and just live with us. So that's what he did. And then um, his longtime girlfriend Sarah moved in as well, and so they both live here. And Chris is amazing. He's a fantastic roommate, uh, super, super sweet, and very conscientious of other people. And I, I love all of my roommates right now. I think that, uh, that we wound up, you know, it was, it was sad when, when Mike and Rowan and them moved out. But I, I wound up with, with a new awesome team of roomies as well, so I've been very fortunate. This is the last question, you guys. I hope that it's not dumb. I hope it's not like a super dumb question. This is another one from Guy Man. How did you get in here? Would you rather be eaten by a pack of wolves or your best friends? 
<sighs> like we all went on this trip, right? But then we wound up getting stranded and maybe if they eat my body, they'll live. And I'm assuming just for added awfulness that in both situations it would be me being eaten alive. Which I don't know how I feel about that. Here's the thing. If my friends were actually eating me, they would make sure that I was dead before they started eating me. They would be kind. They would be kind to me in that regard. So I'm gonna say that them eating me alive is not realistic, but if I were dead in the scenario and then they ate me, and I was sustaining them so that they could eventually be found and live on, then sure, best friends. But if I have to be alive for it, it might as well be wolves. I want to know that it was all instinct and that they couldn't stop themselves and they were like, neat! So thank you for that grotesque ending of our Q&A. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Uh, feel free to submit your questions over Twitter or through email. And I will put both of those right here, like where you, where you send all, all, all that. Otherwise, have a great day!